back. This week, we're going to do something called supervised classification. And basically, what we're going to do is create a land cover map from a satellite image. And it's a three-step process. First, we have to have some source of known cover types. So typically, that will be uh, sample polygons. And then we'll use those sample polygons from each cover type to extract the pixel values from within these cover types. So what's the mean and variation within each cover type from the satellite image? And then based on the spectral statistics, for every pixel, we predict the cover type for our original satellite image. So here's a hypothetical example. Let's say this is our satellite image and we have uh, two simple polygons, one representing unburned area and another one representing a burned area. And the average pixel value within the burn area is 30 with a standard deviation of five. And the average pixel value in the unburned polygon is a 20 with a standard deviation of five. So in this ideal situation, both cover types have a bell-shaped curve peaking at the mean. And we're gonna use a classifier called the maximum likelihood classifier, which basically assumes that if you're close to the mean, you're a high likelihood to come from that cover type. So for example, pixel value of 20, it's very likely that we came from this cover type as opposed to a pixel value of 30, it's much more likely that we came from this cover type. So the maximum likelihood classifier assumes a bell-shaped likelihood peaking at the means, and then basically wherever the bell shape intersects, that's our threshold. So in this simple example, if it's less than 25, any pixel less than 25 will have a higher likelihood to belong to this cover type, and any pixel greater than 25 will have a likely, higher likelihood to belong to this cover type. Okay, in this example, this was uh, the spectral values for the burned polygon, and the mean of 20 was the spectral values for the unburned polygon. And then we simply use the maximum likelihood classifier to predict for every pixel whether it's more likely to be a burned polygon or an unburned polygon. So for example, our threshold in this example is 25, so all these pixels are classified to be unburned because they're less than 25, and all the pixels that are greater than 25 are classified to be burned. And in this case, our threshold is 25.0, but when you do this in lab, the threshold will much more likely be some quantity like 25.17234, so there's no tie because we'll have a quantity with a floating point value, not a whole number as our threshold. And then last step would be all the pixels that are zero, we'll color code them some unburned color, and all the pixels that are one, we'll color code them to be some burned color. So the final result is what's called a classified raster, where zeros represent predicted unburned pixels and one represent predicted burned pixels. And you as a user decide what's the appropriate color for unburned versus burned pixels. Okay, let's take a simple example from last Thursday. We had leaf photo and we geo-referenced it so it was in, in inches. So if you remember, uh, let's make the background of our data frame some other color. So if I go to frame, let's make the background color black. Okay, so we'll delete a polygon representing the leaf, and I'll just make a polygon representing the leaf, and then we'll enter some attributes for that polygon. So if we open the attribute table, let's give that a class value of one and a label leaf. And then we'll delineate white space from the piece of paper as a polygon background in a class of one or zero and then save edits okay so in this simple example we've got two polygons one representing pixel values of a leaf and the other one representing background from the piece of paper so the second step will be to extract the pixel values and the variation amongst those pixel values from these two polygons. Okay, so we'll use this tool, Create Signatures, 
And the first thing it asks is, what's the name of the image we want to get representative pixel values from? So that's our leaf photo. And then the second thing is, what's the input sample data? So that's our trending polygons. And then we'll use our sample field label. And the output signature file is a text file, so it can't go to a geodatabase, it'll go to a folder. So I'll put it in this folder in Verbilla Week 10 classification. And I'll call it Leaf Pixel Stats. And I'll have an extension uh, GSG, which stands for Grid Signature. And then just OK. OK, so the Create Signature tool simply made this text file so we could open it up in WordPad or Notepad. And here's what's in that text file. So basically, there are three pixel values inside each pixel, one for the red, green, and blue intensities in that photo. And we had two classes. So our first class was the class leaf, and that consisted of 43,352 pixels. And then these were the average values in the band one, band two, and band three within that training polygon. And then this was how variable the values were within that training polygon. And then the second class, class two, is the background. So for class two, the background, there were 11,614 pixels inside that training polygon. And here were the average values for the three bands from that original photo, and then how variable. So a lot less variation in those white paper pixels compared to the variation in the leaf. Okay, so now since we have the spectral statistics, we can use this text file to classify every pixel in that leaf photo, whether it's more likely to belong to the pixels that were from the leaf training field or whether it's more likely to belong to the pixels that were in the background training polygon. Okay, so the tool we'll use is the maximum likelihood classification tool. The input raster is our leaf photo. The input signature file is our DSG file. So in this case, it was leafpixelstats.dsg. And then I'll call my output raster leafraster.pif. So basically, it will have for every pixel a prediction whether it was more likely to belong to the leaf polygon pixels or whether it was more likely to belong to the background polygon pixels. And then just OK. So here's our original image and our trending polygons. And then here's our classified raster. So basically, for every pixel, it predicted whether it was more likely to belong to this original polygon or this original polygon, extracting the pixel values from our leaf versus the pixel values from our piece of paper. And then we might want to know, well, what's the area of this leaf in square inches? So if we look at the attribute table, we have the count of the number of pixels in that class leaf. So then we just need to know what's the area of every pixel. So this is the area of every pixel in inches. So I'm going to copy that. And then we'll go back to our raster attribute table. And then we'll calculate inches is going to be equal to count times the width in inches, control V to paste, times the height in inches, control V to paste. So that's the area in square inches of that leaf that's sitting on this piece of paper, which is three inches wide and two inches high. Okay, in the next video session, I'll teach you how to assess the accuracy of classified images.